Good day Great Tools, welcome to this first lesson in week 24. We're going to carry on looking at optical phenomena and properties of material. In this lesson we're going to join the Mindset Learn team as it teaches how to do calculations for the photoelectric effect and then I'm just going to revise a couple of things with you at the end of that. Please watch the video carefully. Remember that Einstein proposed a revolutionary idea that light consists of particles called photons. Each photon carries a certain amount of energy determined by its frequency. This fits with work by another scientist, Max Planck, who proposed quantum theory. According to quantum theory, energy exists only in certain amounts, which we can think of as packages. The amount of energy that a photon has can be calculated with this equation, E equals HF. E is the energy of a photon of light which has a frequency of F. H is Planck's constant which is 6,63 times 10 to the power negative 34 joules per second. As the light shines on a metal, each photon gives all its energy to one electron in the metal. We know that incident light with a wavelength of 288 nanometers can just eject electrons from zinc. How much energy does each photon of light of this wavelength have? To use this equation to solve the problem, we first need to find the frequency of light. Frequency of light equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength of the light. We know that the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. The unit in which we have the speed of light is meters per second, so we need to convert the wavelength of this light into the unit meters too. Nano means times 10 to the power minus 9. 288 nanometers is 288 times 10 to the power minus 9 meters. We substitute for the wavelength of this light. Notice that the unit meters cancels and we are left with seconds to the minus 1, which is the same as per second or hertz. This is the unit of frequency. So this light has a frequency of 1,04 times 10 to the power 15 hertz. Store this value in your calculator's memory. How much energy does this light have? We substitute the values for Planck's constant and the light's frequency. Remember to use the values stored in memory to avoid rounding off error. Notice how the unit seconds cancels, leaving the unit joules in the answer. This is the unit of energy. So each photon of this light has 6,91 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy. Remember that this light had the cutoff wavelength and cutoff frequency for this metal, zinc. In other words, light of a frequency any less than this light would not eject electrons from zinc. That means that the amount of energy that each photon of this light gives is just enough for an electron to break free from zinc. We have calculated the amount of energy each photon of this light gives as 6,91 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. To break free from zinc, an electron has to have 6,91 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy. We call this zinc's work function, WO. A metal's work function is the minimum amount of energy an electron needs to be able to be emitted from that metal. A metal's work function is a specific type of energy. A metal's cutoff frequency is a specific kind of frequency. The general equation which relates a photon's energy to its frequency is E equals HF. The specific equation which relates a metal's work function to its cutoff frequency is WO equals HFO. We found that sodium's cutoff wavelength is 589 nanometers. 
This corresponds to a cutoff frequency of 5,09 times 10 to the power 14. From this, we can calculate sodium's work function as 3,38 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. This is how much energy an electron on the surface of sodium needs to break free and be emitted. From this information, which element holds its electrons tighter, zinc or sodium? Zinc has a greater work function than sodium, so electrons need more energy to be able to pull away from zinc than from sodium. So zinc must hold its electrons more tightly than sodium does. We know that if the light incident to zinc has a frequency more than zinc's cutoff frequency, it will cause photoelectric emission. Incident light with a frequency of 1,5 times 10 to the power 15 hertz does cause photoelectric emission. How much energy does this light have? We substitute values into the equation. Notice that we now use the general form of the equation, E equals HF. We find the answer, 9,95 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Remember that each electron on zinc's surface needs 6,91 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy to break free from zinc. So the 9,95 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules that each photon of this light gives each electron is more than enough. The electron is emitted with the extra energy in the form of kinetic energy. How much is this extra energy? In other words, how much kinetic energy does each of these electrons move off the metal with? The amount of kinetic energy is the amount of energy the photon gives the electron minus the amount which the electron needs to break away from the metal. We have already seen that the amount of energy the photon gives the electron is called E, and E equals HF. And we have seen that the amount of energy which the electron needs to break free from the metal is called that metal's work function, WO, which equals H F O. So the kinetic energy each electron leaves the metal surface with Ke equals E minus W O, which is the same as H F minus H F O. We have already calculated that each photon has 9,95 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy. So each electron receives this amount of energy from the light. We have also already calculated the work function of zinc as 6,91 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. We subtract this from the amount of energy each electron got from the light to find the electron's kinetic energy as 3,04 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So how fast do these emitted electrons move? Or rather, what is the maximum speed of the emitted electrons? Remember that we have seen this simulation before. Notice how the emitted electrons move at different speeds. Why? This equation only applies for the electrons which are emitted from the surface of the metal. Electrons which are emitted from under the surface of the metal are held tighter to the metal, so they need more energy to free them. This means that they leave the metal with less kinetic energy than the surface electrons, so they move slower. So the surface electrons leave with the maximum amount of kinetic energy for that particular light incident on that particular metal. We call this Ke max and Ke max equals half mv max squared. V max means magnitude of maximum velocity. M is the mass of one electron. V max means magnitude of maximum velocity. So let's get back to the question. What is the maximum speed of electrons emitted when light of this frequency shines on zinc?
We need to know the speed or magnitude of velocity, v, of these electrons. So we make v max the subject of the equation. We multiply each side of the equation by 2 over m. 2 ke max over m equals v max squared. Now we square root each side. Square root of 2 ke over m equals v max, which is the same as v max equals square root of 2 ke over m. The mass of one electron is 9,11 times 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms. Remember that we have calculated the maximum kinetic energy of these electrons. We substitute values into the equation and find that the speed of these electrons when rounded off is 816,000 meters per second. That is very fast. Let's solve one more problem. Light of a certain frequency shines on a piece of sodium. We are given the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. And we are asked to calculate the frequency of the incident light. We know that the maximum kinetic energy of each emitted electron equals the energy the incident light gave a surface electron, minus the work function for that metal. Ke max equals E minus WO. Or more fully, Ke max equals HF minus HFO. We are asked to find the frequency of the incident light. This is related to the energy of each photon of incident light, which equals HF. So to solve this, F must be the subject of the formula. We add HFO to each side of the equation. Ke max plus HFO equals HF, which is the same as HF equals Ke max plus HFO. Now we divide both sides by H. F is now the subject of the formula. F equals Ke max plus HFO divided by H. We are told the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons 1,07 times 10 to the power minus 20 joules. We are also told that the metal is sodium. To answer this question, we must be given sodium's work function or its cutoff frequency or wavelength. Sodium's cutoff frequency is 589 nanometers. So here is the equation we will use, and these are the values we know. We substitute values into the equation. We solve it. Each photon of incident light must have had a frequency of 5,7, 3 times 10 to the power 14 hertz. Before we end this lesson, let us recap the equations we have used. Each photon of incident light has an amount of energy equal to Planck's constant times the light's frequency. E equals HF. A specific form of this equation is the energy which a photon must give to an electron on the surface of a metal so that it can be emitted. This amount of energy is called that metal's work function, WO. And the minimum frequency of light which is needed is called that metal's cutoff frequency, FO. If the incident light has a frequency greater than the metal's cutoff frequency, then each photon has more than enough energy to give each surface electron to overcome the metal's work function. The electron leaves with this difference in energy in the form of kinetic energy, Ke. Surface electrons leave with the maximum amount of kinetic energy for that particular situation, Ke max. Ke max equals the energy the photon gave the electron, E, minus the metal's work function, WO. Or, more fully, half mv max squared equals HF minus HFO. 
m is the mass of an electron which is 9,11 times 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms v max is the maximum magnitude of the velocity of the emitted electrons so let's just summarize what you learned you learned that Planck's equation is e equals hf which where e is the energy of the um, light that is being shone onto something okay e is energy measured in joules h is Planck's constant which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds you don't have to learn this it's on the formula sheet how nice is that it's on the formula sheet and f is frequency measured in hertz and please note that you have to have the right units otherwise this equation is not going to be correct we also learned the definition of the work function and you guys have to learn this. The work function is the minimum amount of energy an electron needs to be able to be emitted from a specific metal. So it's the minimum amount of energy. So work function is the minimum, I don't know why I'm writing it again, minimum amount of energy. It's very important that you know that definition very well. So that can be written as W0, where W0 stands for work function, equals HF0. So if you look at it carefully, you can see that it basically has the same pattern as this. You have got E is equal to HF. Here you've got W equals HF. But please note that that is W0, which is the work function, equals H times F0. And F0 is the threshold frequency the threshold frequency so what you need to understand is that the threshold frequency matches the work function they go hand in hand okay so work function is the energy an electron requires to be emitted so it's equal to h times the threshold frequency so let's go through it the photoelectric equation is equal to e equals w0 plus ke max okay where e is basically the energy of the incident light so this is the energy of the incident light okay we again h is Planck's constant and f is the frequency frequency of the incident light okay then you've got w0 w0 is what it is the work function don't get confused it is the work function where f0 is the threshold frequency threshold frequency and ke max is your kinetic energy where that's a half times the mass of an electron which again is given to you on the formula sheet times by the maximum velocity of the emitted electron so remember what we learned we learned that basically the amount of energy has to at least match the work function the energy of the light has to at least match the work function in order for an electron to be emitted but once you've done that any energy above that is going to give you a velocity of the emitted electron in other words it's going to give you some movement so please make sure you understand that go do some questions in the assessment at the end of the year i mean assessment in the turnable system please grade 12s have a great day